Hey, everybody, we're going to talk about the TPP and uh, the leaked documents regarding copyright infringements and uh, Internet usage and stuff like that, where it's also going to take us into net neutrality. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible. I am going to not uh, I'm not going to make this exhaustive. I'm just going to make point out a few points to you. You guys can read the document for yourself and see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, before I get into all that, I want to talk to you about this video um, that came out by Grindle61. China asked the world to impose a code of conduct for the Internet. Well, do you notice how they don't specifically say exactly what code of conduct that they are suggesting? Now, if it's anything like the code of conduct that China uses with their own uh, uh, people there, they're restricted from being able to speak out against the government. They're not permitted to visit certain sites. So why is exactly China making demands that the rest of the world impose a code of conduct on the Internet? They already have the ability to block out what they want to block from their people being able to access that stuff that they don't want them to see. That's not freedoms, people. That doesn't give you the First Amendment to, to learn what you want, to view what you want, to say what you want. And China has no business suggesting to any country that they impose anything that will hinder the rights, especially of the American people. If, you're, if this government even thinks about entertaining any suggestion by China by imposing a code of conduct on the Internet, know that your government is looking to screw you without lube. Understand? Just letting you know that I don't know exactly how this is going to play out. But let's take a look at the TPP, shall we? Like I said, I'm not going to make this exhaustive, just going to make a few points. Understand, in this document uh, by uh, the TPP, throughout the whole document, we're talking about the whole TPP, none of this was formed or was mapped out with any American citizen in mind. And I mean by this is that it appears that all of this was structured around the input of corporations. Pharmaceutical corporations, talk about internet service providers, we're talking about telephone companies, Verizon, all of these different corporations know exactly what is in these documents, right? Pharmaceutical companies had input about the exclusivity rights between the 12 nations. That means that they had input in these documents. So tell me, isn't it the American public that voted these individuals into office to look out for the best interest of the American public? So why is it that corporations had all this input in the structuring of these deals in the TPP with the 12 nations. That means that our government is actually looking out for the interest of the corporation and not for the American public. Under, I want everybody out there who may be listening far and wide to understand what this means. Okay? I will get into corporations here in a minute, but understand, how does the, how does the net neutrality play into all this? In the structuring of the TPP, it is being uh, it is is being mapped out that all of these countries form some kind of administrative procedures, legal uh, protections, legal procedures to deal with remedies and complaints and um, uh, you know any of these countries or its people that may make a claim against somebody in another country. And who is going to be dealing with those claims and remedies and complaints? Well, that's the FCC. That's why your net neutrality was passed. They have different ways that they can punish you for violating what is in this TPP. Now, you can be fined. There are criminal procedures that could be brought against you if you willfully and knowingly do something that... That, that violates any of the uh, the rules that are in the TPP willfully and knowingly. 
Now, you may be able to argue that you didn't understand, um, you know, exactly what was uh, laid out in the rules here. But anyway, let's let's move on. In order to provide adequate legal protection and effective legal remedies against the circumvention of effective technological measures that authors, performers, and producers of phonograms use in connection with the exercise of their rights and that restrict unauthorized act in respect to their works, performance, phonograms, each party shall provide, each party shall provide that any person who knowingly or having reasonably grounds to know circumvents without authority, blah, 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 go down the line. I told you it's not going to be exhaustive. But basically, all these countries are going to have to set up just like they did with net neutrality. The FCC is going to be dealing with any claims, remedies, and complaints administratively and criminally against any person where a claim is made against them for violating any of these copyright rules. Okay, so you're following me so far. So what does that have to do with YouTube personalities making videos? Okay, well, again, not only are like companies like Verizon and AT&T and other companies involved in the structuring of this TPP agreement, as well as pharmaceutical companies, but also media conglomerates. Now, as you can see that, there's no longer going to be allowed where people will get to use a uh, an article like, let's say, uh, CNN or uh, Reuters or some of these other ones because their pages will, are copyrighted, right? So now when you go to uh, present a video and you're using the dialogue or using the page in your presentation, you can't do it, right? And that's stated right here in this uh, three, knowingly distributes, imports for distri distribution, broadcasts, communicates, or makes available to the public copies of works. So if a news article is a work of the, the, the reporter who wrote the article, you will not be able to display it or communicate to the people on this platform like we do now. So I'm thinking that if this passes and we have no other choice, because I don't believe people are going to stand up and do anything about all this. So what can be done about all that? Well, I think that we could be able to, uh, there are some very trustworthy channels on here who report to you the news and they can do it just like they do with the five or six o'clock news. These media uh, outlets where they're uh, sitting there at the desk and telling you how, uh, you know, this guy shot up, blah, 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 down, you know, um, uh, down Broadway Street or whatever. And they don't provide any links, but they tell you the news and a lot of people just sit there and eat that up. Right. Because a lot of it's a bunch of hocus bullcrap. But there are trustworthy people here on YouTube that if they report it just that way, you would be able to verify the information that they're sharing with you because you still have Google because they will have exclusive rights to be able to link the news stories on their search engines because these all these companies will grant them that right. But I guarantee you they're not going to grant the right to people who are going to be speaking out against the propaganda and all that other good stuff, right? And Drudge already stated that he's going to be pretty much done. He will not be able to link stories on his site, right? Okay. So, each party shall provide for criminal procedures and penalties to be applied where any person is found to engage willfully or for the purposes of commercial advantage or financial gain. So, how does a party provide for these procedures? The United States already has. The FCC, you violate any of this, they have, they have different they have different things that they can implement against you. Now, you could be fined. You could be... Um, you could have your, uh, right to, uh, uh, you know, access the internet removed due to your internet service provider. They can, they can do that. There's different things that they can do, right? If you knowingly violate that. When you get to the net neutrality documents that everybody has pretty much become aware of over the uh, quite a few months since last year. Notice that some of the verbiage in here is access to all lawful destinations on the Internet. Well, 
who decides what's lawful and unlawful? Do you understand that in this administrative procedures, the APA Act, they will have the right under this net neutrality to decide which which uh, 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 websites you can visit. They will deem what is lawful and what is not. I think that it, it's, it's pretty much clear that you're not supposed to be going to check out child porn. You're not supposed to be go checking out how to uh, create bombs out of fertilizer or something like that. I can understand that. But do you see how they're leaving this so broad that you don't know exactly what's going to become unlawful? So are they going to make it impossible for you to access websites that they don't want you to? Or are you going to be penalized for visiting websites that you don't even know are lawful or unlawful? Do you see how this has kind of left me in like, I don't know how they're going to proceed with this, right? So what does that mean for individuals that use internet cafes and use like uh, the Wi-Fi at like McDonald's or something like that? And the internet service provider is supposed to be the one who deals with these issues at the behest of the FCC, which all they're doing is uh, they are, hold on one second. They are enforcing the rules as they are displayed to us in these TPP documents and the uh, uh, net neutrality, right? Well, could it be possible, as they stated, that people will have to have an ID to be able to access the Internet? And if there is any activity that they deem unlawful or that violates any of their rules, that your ID will no longer be able to access the Internet. They can terminate your ability to do so. Do you see what I'm talking about? Because anybody could go just to any internet cafe and start, uh, you know, accessing the internet and doing whatever they want. And we wouldn't have to be sitting at our home and, and having uh, our internet uh, come back to us. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I guarantee you they're going to be doing something about that. So now, one thing that you have to understand when they structure the verbiage in a lot of these documents where they say such as, but not limited to and inter alia inter alia means among other things. And I, I, throughout this whole document, this is repeatedly stated inter alia among other things, among other things, but they don't tell you what these other things really are. So they're kind of leaving that general. And I don't like that because later on it could come up and say, well, we did say inter alia among other things. So that is included in the rules of the documents or the rules of the, uh, you know, the agreement of the TPP and also the such as but not limited to. So the criticism and comment here that they're showing you. So what they're trying to express to you is, is that you still have the right under the First Amendment to criticize and to make comments and also that you can still report the news. Now, you may, as I think I stated earlier, I can't remember that we could do it just like the five and six o'clock news does on the TV. We may not be able to share their articles and read it straight to you uh, in a video presentation, but we can do it like that. And all you have to do is go to your trustworthy YouTube channels that you trust that is going to relate the news to you as it's what it is. And then you can go to Bing or, or, or Google or whichever search engine that you choose and you can verify whether the report that you heard is absolutely accurate, right? So I think that we're they're trying to hinder us or prevent us with these rules from being able to share the links and the stories that we would be normally using. That's what Drudge was trying to warn us about. So now everybody, I want you to listen up close to what I'm trying to tell you. Throughout this whole document of the TPP that I've seen so far, all of these corporations have been involved in structuring with the government exactly what is laid out in these plans, in the agreement, everything that's involved in the TPP, multiple corporations had input. Now, last I recall, it is the American public that has the vote on who is put 
into political office to represent the American people. It is not the corporations. But if you look at this document, you will get the you will get the understanding that the American people right here were not consulted about anything in this agreement. Why is it that the corporations have all of the say on how something is structured in the TPP when they are the ones who are being uh, their interests are being looked out for by the government, but the American people's interests are being ignored? Do you understand that? And that's this is not something new, folks. Back. Even to the time of the Civil War, when you had like a Charles Schwab, Carnegie, uh, Vanderbilt, J.P. Morgan, all of these corporate financial corporations, railroad magnates, uh, all of the other ones, they had a say with the states and the federal government as they built their businesses and the corporations became, yeah, that's right, one of the main uh, powers in the government do you understand that okay so you could see that right here when they created corporations they influenced legislation at the local state and federal levels as they built businesses that span multiple states and communities so it is their influence in the tpp and not the american public do you understand that this means that everything in this tpp is to the detriment of the american public but is in the best interest of the corporation. Why would the TPP be blocked from view of the American public when it is corporations that they are the ones who know everything that's in this TPP agreement because they were not only consulted, but they are the power behind this agreement. Okay. Does that, I hope that is well understood. The legal maxim of law is, is that a corporation is also a person, according to the U.S. Constitution, where they have the ability to sue and be sued just like a natural person. And, of course, there was a, a court ruling back in 2010 of the Supreme Court. Uh, was it Citizens United or something like that? I can't remember. Where it appears that a corporation has far more rights as a person than does a citizen person of the United States. And we can see that because corporations were the ones who were involved in structuring of the TPP agreement with these other nations. So why is everything that is in there a detriment to the American public? That's, it's just, it's crazy. How is it that the American public, who is the one who has the power to put these people into office, yet these people do not look out for the best interest of the people whatsoever. When are the people going to say enough is enough? We are going to remove you out of office and we're going to put somebody in there who's going to be looking out for the interest of the American people. But of course, the, the big corporations complain about, well, we want to be able to give, you know, as much money as we want to, to some of these, uh, you know, uh, uh, politicians as they're running for office so that these people will have to bow down to the demands of the big corporations, pharmaceutical communications, Verizon, AT&T, so on and so forth, oil, uh, internet service providers, all of that. Do you, I hope you guys understand that. So just so you see here, inter alia means among other things, for example, or including, so, as I stated there, I wanted to show you exactly what that word means, or what the Latin phrase means. Last thing, okay? So you understand that the net neutrality was laid down to the American public first. So the FCC is going to be in charge of basically any remedies and any prosecutions or dealing with any claims against American citizens for violating any of these rules, uh, copyright infringements, anything like that. That's why that net neutrality was set up. Now you understand why they did it. And you know that if that was pushed through with ease, and it was, then I guarantee you they did it because they knew that this 
TPP is going to pass and there is nobody going to stand in their way because it's all mapped out. It's all planned out. The corporations run the United States. This is a corporate government. This is not something that the American people set up. We didn't set it up to be like this, but we've allowed it to happen. Understand under the 14th Amendment, and not a lot of people even re read this and understand exactly what it says. The 14th Amendment addresses many aspects of citizenship and the rights of citizens. Okay? Section 1. All persons born or naturalized in the United States are citizens of the United States. Right? Well, that's not what the section says. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States. So how is a person who is born in the United States, how is it possible that he could not be a subject to the jurisdiction thereof? There you go with your parent in putting your birth certificate into the records, making you a citizen unwittingly. I do believe that if everybody stood up and demanded that we were no longer under the jurisdiction of the federal government, what could they do? Could they impose any of these rules or sanctions against an American public who demands to no longer be a subject? That's what you are. You are a subject. That's what the kings called their, uh, the, the, the people, you're the subjects. You're, you're my subjects. I'm the king. This government is not a kingship, everybody. This government was put into its office by the American people, and it's going to take the American people to take them out. All of this right here has been put into place to destroy what we had as America. But that's been gone long ago. Understand that. That has been destroyed long ago, been now the only thing that we can do is all come together and do something about it. But what can you do if all the people cannot see what is going on right in front of their face? All right. So well, I just wanted to share that with you. Sorry it took so long.